In Unreal Engine, gameplay tags allow you to add information to your actors in a structured and convenient way. Instead of creating multiple Boolean variables to track different properties, you can use tags to achieve the same functionality, only much cleaner. For example, imagine you have weapons in your game that apply different effects like fire, ice or poison. Instead of making separate variables like is fire, is ice, you can simply assign a gameplay tag like attribute.fire or attribute.ice to the weapon and then process damage or effects based on those tags. To create new or manage existing gameplay tags, you can go to edit, project settings, project and then gameplay tags. Here you can click manage gameplay tags. Use the plus button in the top left to add a new tag. Tags are organized in a hierarchy. So for example, you can have a main category like attribute with child tags such as fire, ice and poison. So when you create a new tag, the hierarchy is defined using a dot separator. So in this example, attribute.fire. When adding a new tag, you are also prompted to select a source file to save it in. By default, Unreal Engine uses default gameplay tags.ini. However, you can also create new files to store your tags in, namely by selecting add new gameplay tag source. And here you can define a custom.ini file for your tags. This can become useful for organizing tags across larger projects or when creating plugins. One thing that is also important to mention is that tags can even go deeper than just one level. Let's say you want to categorize your characters inside your game. In this case, the top category is character. Then we have subcategories, player and enemy. Now we want to further break down the enemy category. For that, we create subcategories Minion, Elite and Boss. Once you have created your tags, it is time to use them. While you can add tags directly to an actor's tags array, they are stored as raw F names. Meaning you have to manually type them in as strings or have to convert them between gameplay tag and F names. This is prone to errors and harder to manage. Instead, I would recommend the following. To store a single tag, you can create a property of type gameplay tag. To store multiple tags together, you can create a property of type gameplay tag container. For example, if we have a weapon that can only have a single attribute, it would make sense to use a gameplay tag as the type, since this only allows us to store a single tag value. However, if a weapon can have multiple attributes such as attribute.fire or attribute.poison, it would make sense to use a gameplay tag container because then we can store multiple tags at once. With having a gameplay tag container, you can do a lot of things inside your blueprints. You can use hashtag to check if a tag exists in your container. So for example, you can check if your container contains the fire attribute. I want to briefly talk about the exact match option. Let's say we want to check if our container contains any attribute. For that, we would check if it contains the attribute tag. Now, in our container, we only have the attribute.fire tag. With the exact match option enabled, this operation would return false since the tags don't match exactly. Since attribute.fire is not the same as attribute. However, if the exact match option is disabled, this operation would result in true since the attribute tag is part of the attribute.fire tag. You can even have more complex comparisons using the has all tags and has any tags nodes. Here you basically compare the contents of two different containers with each other. Lastly, you can also modify the contents of a container at runtime. So to dynamically add or remove tags during gameplay, you can use add gameplay tag to add a single tag to a container, remove gameplay tag to remove a single tag from a container and append gameplay tag container, which basically combines the contents of two different tag containers into one. 
With all of this, you should be ready to utilize gameplay tags inside your project. And next time, we will have a look into how we can create and use gameplay tags inside C++. If you don't want to miss this, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time.